We're here, Greg. Here we are. You're in uh, the desert. I'm in London. We're yeah. in the desert of, <laughs> of stuck pixels in, and voices. In fact, you're in, may I say, you're in Copenhagen, right? Sure, yeah. At the, I'll show you where, where I'm really standing at the end. <laughs> no, but you're working on a, a new show, installing a new show. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm working for um, this show called uh, Mother, which is a, a show curated by uh, Mary um, uh, in, uh, in the Louisiana Museum. And uh, it's, um, yeah, it's nice having, she's been, she's been doing a lot of shows starting with the letter M. Last time it was Moon, now it's Mother. <laughs> and so I, is, is she involved in More, 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 which starts yeah, with yeah. three M's? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> she should be. <laughs> um, and I hear there's an octopus involved in... Yeah, in so show. yeah, it's, it's, it's this ongoing um, project that has grown over the years. Um, it really started um, for some time ago when I uh, worked with from a text from a friend of mine called uh, Rory Macbeth, who uh, missed, uh, who translated a Kafka story from German to, uh, to English. And uh, the main character was a writer, and I thought he should uh, write with the ink of an octopus. So that, that was how it came in in, in the work in some way. Yeah. And then, so it was like this writing um a big part of the venice project as well the yeah, so we, and that sort of led to uh, to venice this idea of uh, could we be something else could we connect to to the mm -hmm. other uh, as much uh, uh, as animal material humans how can we um belong completely to everything or to 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 each other and, and the octopus was this kind of uh, symbolism of uh, malleability mm. of being able to touch thing and, and, and hold on thing and has the, the idea of the octopus is that he's all his um, brain on his, uh, you know, it's feeling as it touch and it's very direct. Since you speak of that, Laura, it's funny, it's a wonderful effect when you move your hands, it's like you're uh, creating yeah, yeah. some kind of uh, yeah, well, You may slowly <laughs> go where I am actually, if you paste it together. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if we have Stephanie back, but uh, until yeah, no, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, good. Right. Great, great. I don't know why I always, you know, disconnected. There's some kind of technical no problem. Can you hear me right now? Can you hear yes, me? We hear you well. Yes, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, continue to talk. And um, I, I want to say it, it was really a great show. And, a and congratulations. Uh, but it is pity that you and Greg cannot see the exhibition and the audience reaction by yourself. The audience love it. And the interesting point is they totally get your humor uh, mm -hmm. and what, willing to immerse themselves in your semi-fictional universe. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, mm -hmm. so it's quite mm, yeah, it's fascinating. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. So I talking miss, about... I yeah, miss Greg, Greg, highly. Please. I'd love to yeah. be there in person to, to see what you're doing yeah. at uh, Tank, which looks an extraordinary show. Mm -hmm. And of course, to see Laura's work. I, since you mentioned it, okay. uh, Stephanie, I uh, wanted to yeah, ask yeah. Laura about long distance mm -hmm. exhibition making, because we had this problem already mm -hmm. with the show that we did in London, Laura did yeah. in September, beautiful show, but you weren't able to come and uh, work mm -hmm. closely with our team to realize it. I wish I could. Yeah. And in Laura, in making these shows virtually you know for you it's very important to have the sort of tactile connection to the exhibition mm -hmm. especially when you're making a new show and not being able to in this time I wonder um, whether you've felt ever more that you need to be there or whether you've found some way of accommodating this situation. Yeah I mean it's a it's a learning curve huh? we're in a, in a new situation which um, which uh, makes us uh, it, it makes you work a lot more on your imagination, <laughs> communication, and and trying to pass on um, feelings. And I mean, that's kind of when we were talking about the octopus as well. Like, can we feel the other not not being there, or can, can we connect with uh, with a, a place mm -hmm. which is um, far or which is uh, inaccessible, or and can we uh, can we relate to it? And I've, it's definitely a uh, um, 
complex and uh but i think with tank it was um i mean it was a wonderful team and um we managed the, the work existed uh previously so i think that sort of also yeah. uh gave gave me a bit of um things to hold on when i'm creating a completely yeah. new piece uh then it's like how can i tell him what to do i don't know yet myself you know you know i'm still <laughs> playing along I'm still editing till the last minute so I'm still editing the space as much as I'm editing the videos and so it's kind of it's very very organic usually and it grows really as yeah a garden you plant and uh, you you fill the room I, I kind of feel I need to be with uh, Bernard Lermy to you know comes into a space and live it mm. and smell it and touch it and and create so I think that's 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 difficult long term for me I'll have to uh, reconsider <laughs> somewhere maybe do a lot of uh, of uh, deeper work where I'm just pushing walls virtually or I'm just you know controlling the space in a different manner or but it, it when it's very um, kind of narrative and space uh a creation of a, a fictional space it's 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 um it's it's kind of difficult of you course. mentioned mm. you mentioned deeper and you you did the deeper thing yeah and this work is in the show of course and it's in some ways one of the simplest works it's a screen mm. uh it's a, the, the narrative is very straightforward you're repeating this kind of mantra of going deeper and you're making this this gesture and mm -hmm. it's at the same time as being simple it's incredibly profound it's interesting in the context of what we're talking about about mm -hmm. installation it, it seems to have a tactile immersive experience mm -hmm. even though mm -hmm. it's just a screen just you and the screen mm -hmm. um, and it it's not so much that it draws you in but it in a way brings you into the viewer's space you know it's, mm -hmm. you're not sucking the viewer into the virtual space but you're you're, you're going deeper into the space outside it, it seems to me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that piece was interesting. I mean, I made it at a moment where I'm like, what am I going to do next? Or, you know, like this kind of moments in an artist's career where you're like, uh, oh, you look at a lot of wonderful work you've seen and you're just like, oh, I wish I could do deeper, stronger things. Or like, could I, and could I ch change the space? And I think it's the same with my sign where ideally this wall would be five meters late further or how can we with the imagination push our ways of of seeing the space and see, and reacting to it and you're right i mean but what's what's nice is like it's a presence just for the hands that like, want to go deep and push you in the image yeah i want to mm. swallow in you you know i want to take you inside the image and how and I think that's the magic of video as well. And I kind of completely love these virtual pixels that, are, that can mm. uh, um, travel and, uh, and exist like now we are. We are traveling through holding little bits there that's floating in the air. <laughs> uh, so that's, I think that's fascinating. And that's how, yeah, that piece definitely came with this impossibility of really being there either because you're not. Yeah not there we are in, that's what artists do they create images and it, it, it's just an image and it's kind of almost a frustration of the image as well oh, i'm just an image but i want to be and i want to be with you and i want to share uh something with you yeah, me you too. yeah. <laughs> and actually i think yes thank you for your great talk and actually greg and the law uh, you know i think the term deep uh, repeats and uh, men being mentioned a lot in your work, Law. Uh, mm. And um, I, if I'm not mistaken, and Greg, I know Listen Gallery held an exhibition for Law in New York 2018. And at that time, the exhibition was named the Deep Travel. You see, Deep comes yeah. again, right? <laughs> and also this time in, in Tang Shanghai, I feel that I really felt that the depth of the space, the mise-en-scene really represents how you understand the, you know, the word deep. So mm. uh, I, got, I got a question that um, maybe for Greg first and then to Law. Uh, Greg, what do you think about Law's recent work since then? I mean, the deep travel exhibition in Listen Gallery in 2018. And what about her exhibition this time? What do you feel? Well, it's a continuum and that piece had been shown before right. and we adapted it to our mm -hmm. small space in New York. And 
now, of course, it's um, it, it's even stranger. You know, to think back about that, mm -hmm. show, the whole idea of travel um, seems yeah. <laughs> a fantasy. You know, it seems like a, a dream somehow. I I, um, I I'm in London, and it's in the morning here, and uh, like a lot of people. I had very uh, deep dreams, uh, and these days you can't always distinguish between, you know, your dreams and reality and, and art actually. And Lord, dreams, um, we've said dreams are a key kind of aspect of your work. It's one kind of an eric as a continual uh, thread through your work. I was looking, because I read recently an interview with Anne Carson, do you know, uh, a wonderful mm -hmm. Uh, Canadian poet. If I can, I just read something quickly because I think it's uh, revealing. She she said that her first memory was of a dream, mm -hmm. and she was in the house where she lived. She was three or four years old. She dreamed that she was asleep in the house, and she awoke. She came downstairs. She said the lights were on, although it was hushed and empty. The usual dark green sofa <clears throat> and chairs stood along the usual pale green walls. It was the same old living room. I knew it well. Nothing was out of place. And yet it was utterly, certainly different. Inside its usual appearance, the living room was yeah. as changed as if it had gone mad. Um, and that I, I love the way that that seems to connect even with the furniture, kind of sofa and the, the mm. green walls with also mm. the immersive sense of your installations. So Stephanie, you ask, I mean, this thread of the dream um, is something that yeah. through, and I, maybe Laura, you can say something specific about how, how you feel about the dream world in relation to your work? Yeah, I mean, Good question. The, the, the dream, the subconscious, the deep travel. I mean, yeah. all has the kind of, I can see where we're, we're going, you know, because I guess the deeper the deep travel is like going into places that we, we're kind of hiding from our extreme uh, rationality that we're trying to uh, articulate to be able to communicate with each other. But I, as soon as you go deeper, you you go into these things which are, you you know are there that you sense, but you're not able to hold on, or you you know they're taking you so far that they're kind of scary as well, or or or, or amazing, or they take you to a lot of memory, of course, smell and memories that these triggers and and texture, and I think all 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 this for me the deep deep travel agency was really. Uh, yeah, go into how to go deeper into the subconscious. We were selling subconscious. We were selling um, communication to to things we we uh, we we try to hide almost or push away from our existence. Mm -hmm. or sometimes, so I think that's had this. And then to go to dreams, I think dreams is absolutely. I connect it. I think both subconsciousness and dream for me is, is something very close. I don't know if it is, but I have that feeling that me too, having the first, I think I had a lot of dreams about tunnels, you know, and I think that's how I'm digging. <laughs> I've been digging from the first time I'm, uh, since I'm, I'm an artist or since I'm, I'm, I am mean, for 40, 42 years, like <laughs> digging uh, into, we'll, we'll talk later maybe about language, but digging into a different, uh, uh, yeah, dif things which are not so uh, frontal, I guess, that are not there all the time. And I guess uh, this, um, and then holding, you know, when we created the agency it was also this idea of, the frontal looks like it really looked like a travel agency from the 80s and north, even the 60s, and people would come in or wait, well, can I book a ticket to go to Jamaica? Or, you know, and but then suddenly the front is has a whole back um, complexity <laughs> behind when you enter into that space. And the same with um, what we're doing at uh, Tank, I guess, where um, you you have to enter. Through to, you can choose one or the other door, and one is a deep tunnel of darkness, a corridor, you know, that that will get you somewhere. And um, that's um, I mean that's one one dream. And then with the other dream, you could pick, and it's kind of choice in life or choice of connection in the brain that can, that makes you have that dream that night or. And you never get there. You never. There's a sense in your work also that um, there's always a 
there are alternate states that maybe both you know make you aware of the fragility of all states i guess different mm. situations mm. you playful, you're kind of like kind of plastic you're always looking for something else but it feels that you never get there it's always a kind of longing or a desire and that's actually the state is that state of yeah um, searching and permanent um striving mm. for being alive yeah yeah no totally i think it's like it's even all this ideally sign, all this deep ideally. Uh, we can, can we can we get there? But it's also a way to move forward, to hope for something else, or, or to connect things. And and I think as an artist as well, you can you can never get there. I mean, you cannot have an answer. You, I can't imagine I will ever. I'm, I'm, you're just searching, touching, feeling. Ah, Stephanie, you're back. Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. I, I, I don't know what's, what what was going on there. Can you hear me? Can yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Can, can I ask a question like... that relates to Stephanie and, and Laura, actually, since right. you talk, we're talking about travel and Thank we're talking about that. the specifics of uh, Tank Shanghai, and that is um, yeah. the translation, I guess, of the work um, across cultures. Laura, you're a multicultural person yourself. You work at least every day in two languages, French and English, and mm -hmm. you love wordplay and your titles and, you know, this kind of evolution and disruption really of language. Mm. What does it mean when you're specifically working in a culture, um, and Stephanie, I want to ask as well, from you know receiving yep. this very specific kind of linguistic play um, mm. you know, in China. China is a culture that has so many affinities with the West and yep. you know, so many points of contact with Law's work, mm. and yet there are clearly differences. And I just wonder something about the texture of that translation and how it can how it feels. Maybe Stephanie, mm. be interesting to hear your views on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge, but really good question. But actually, I'm, you know, the first time I saw Loa's work um, many years before, and I got a really a strong impact that you really play with the, you know, the narratives and the parallel and different, you know, the structures, you know, between languages. Because I know Law, you, you know, you are kind of, you know, you got a lot of misunderstanding, miscommunication between using French and English. But actually in, I was just, you know, keep on, uh, keep on wondering about if there is also a kind of a gap or misunderstanding between the Chinese language itself, you know, or the Asian language. And I, I got, um, I found out one interesting point is, you know, uh, in Chinese Asian literature, and the people really want to create two words, you know, they're parallel and that they can kind of complementary to each other. Yeah, and, and they want, you know, to put these two, uh, two stories or two narratives together and want them to. That was so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she comes back. I want to know what she's saying. This idea of this uh, two realities side by side. Mm, yeah, and I well, like the, I like the stop on image actually. We like <laughs> octopus. <laughs> like, are we touching it? Further, deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Laura, you could say something about that. You you know China quite well. You've exhibited uh, twice at least already. You've been there twice and exhibited earlier three years ago in Tangshan, mm. China. Uh, yeah, I think it's really interesting what Stephanie said that uh, the audience really connects and got the humor, got the, um, I mean, what was interesting in the way we presented that show was already there's a, um, a conscious decision you take physically as a person, you know, you enter the left door or the right door yeah. and you experience, uh, and first you've gone deeper just looking at the video wishing to take you deeper. And then you, 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 if you take the, the, the right route, you go into this darkness and you have no idea how long that corridor is. And you end up, um, well, there's a film called uh, Higher and Higher, which is actually that, I think, I, I, is in terms of um, language is, is really purely a translation of of escape and going higher and higher. So it's mostly, it's a sound piece and a, a, a very visual piece, which takes you on into that staircase that sort of makes you almost like throw you into the sky and you're, mm -hmm. you're sort of free from language. You're free from everything there. You're like at another, 
uh, you, yeah, you escaping systems. <laughs> and then, yeah, then there's a, you're going to this, um, you might see um, uh, If It Was, uh, which is a, a piece I did for Haus de Kunst uh, in Munich uh, years, so a few years ago. Uh, in the main hall where we pulled actually the floor up, you know, and so it was like we, it was this marble huge floor, which uh, has the Kunst's very complex history, of course, with uh, um, why it was built for. <laughs> and, uh, so you're trying to sort of clear away that past, that, clean, yeah, clean. Uh, uh, looking underneath uh, what's hidden and trying to, f by, by taking knowledge of it, understanding it, we we can free ourselves you know but hiding it is not yeah. good so it's just like looking under and we we and it's very much the person also i can I, and this again if it was my museum uh, we would all walk around with a candle and look at our work or we would we could add a little bit of pink where we want uh, on the painting or you know like this is kind of things I get in my family anyway. You know, if I give them an artwork, we're like, oh, I would like if it was a bit more pink on the left. Or can you add or a bit of sun there? And, you know, and this idea, this connection of uh, what's new art or what's, oh, what's, what's pleasing, what's, you know, and all this uh, narrative. And I think that's, I think that's something that's so um, basic. I think that we can all, connect as you know with something that pleases us or not or you know and that's kind of uh i i imagine when Stephen you said that the work was um, yeah. food and the humor was taken and and i think the piece um that piece is, is sort of letting you in in a playful way that actually we all <laughs> had moments i would have done it a bit different or you know like i would have uh, so hope and and but of course, in terms, then there's a, a in tool that is here, which is more about subconscious, much more complex about the grand mm. searching, going deeper, and um, yeah, and also um, uh, some uh, language and with translation underneath, which might contradict what I'm saying or adding an mm. element. And I think uh, that's. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, when the first time I showed in China was at the Red Brick Museum in, um, in mm. Beijing, and I was like, in Beijing. Yeah, I don't understand. I, I wasn't sure because I was so much subtitle, so much play on words and English, French, and hit, hit, hit. I mean, it's only if you English, you can sort of say it well, and you can, you know, <laughs> it well, or you can create and and that sort of. But I think it's it's still uh, yeah it's different kind of humor. But I think also the hopefully uh. I mean what when you say it's 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 received it's also because uh, hopefully mm. the image and the senses and the touch and the feeling is uh, is above it almost or has a it sort of swallow you the image swallows you mm. in then you get into mm. the language and start playing with it in the same you misunderstand and that's all the work is about I, I love that people misunderstand and create their own narrative you know yeah. and, you know, hopefully there's a lot of that uh, in China or not or I don't know but it's kind of I love that they will take oh this work must be about her mm -hmm. or, and actually you know the feedback from the audience I got they say that um, by watching your installation a video they can think deeper and even love it brings mm. them a lot of fun and mm. so you know I'm just wondering about if there is related to the way you reach your linguistic humor you know maybe you know frankly speaking you name the spe specific meanings to many objects for example flamingo means angry and the nail brush means excited etc in this mm. case how can you build up your symbolic vocabulary of relics and um, how you use it, you know, and how you make it work to maybe Chinese audience and the Tang Shanghai's audience. That's, you know, really interesting point for me. Yeah, yeah it's almost like if we all mm. create the visual, we are creating, I mean, visual and art is a international language, I think, and that's yeah. why. It's <laughs> like it's Ferranto, isn't it? You, you yeah. could, uh, if you knew your language, we could all communicate. Yeah, <laughs> so this means love, don't forget. <laughs> Okay, so every time you see this, yeah. it's love. 
And so this is, and, and then I think if we start to, it's also the, it's of course it's playful and it's sim simple, it's simplified, it's like 20 words, 20 meanings. But then you start, um, we play along together, you know, instead it's, it's, we can start to, uh, to, if you see love in the corner of, uh, of uh, in the corridor, you're like, oh, there's love there for me. And you sort of has a, it's, it's a moment where you can start sharing by learning, uh, by looking at a lot of our learning, we start to get more and more complexity, I guess. And I know. like the way that in the show that uh, you did with us, uh, Laura, uh, mm -hmm. read DN and in learning uh, at Listen Gallery in September, yeah. with the lexicon with this, uh, yeah. The idea of taking this um, playful attribution of uh, images to words mm -hmm. and then trying to classify it, you know, then trying to kind of put it within boundaries and yeah. take something that's so sort of wild and so uh, mm -hmm. delightful and in a way make rules around it. it. It's a game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a game and can life stay? even especially now where it's so many restrictions, we need imagination, we need mm. a playfulness, or we need to uh, really the imagination to free us <laughs> or take us somewhere else and having art, music, uh, uh, but uh, this conversation we have, it's taking us to a of the levels and the escape of the reality that oh I need to cook again for and tidy again <laughs> and then and, and sort of uh, all the real like I can't go and it's this frustration of feeling a little bit um, yeah stuck physically for sure like the movement mm. uh, so then if we can uh, and I think that's also when I started art for making art for me was a real the freedom of being able to create a new language, my own, not in my own language. And, and as you, I was not very articulate with words. And I think it's like, uh, can an image mean much more or tell, take you uh, in places you never thought it would or, or the sound or the smell. And, and I think that's, yeah. that's when we start to communicate and wherever we are in the world. Yeah. I guess. And that's, um, yeah, but uh, Stephanie, when you were talking about uh, ancient mm. Chinese, you got cut off. Um, can you? Yeah, <laughs> and back. Like, you were like, more like floating octopus, <laughs> and we would, we would. Uh, uh, can you uh, elaborate on this, just so that I, I uh, also see that? Yes, actually, um, I can put it a little bit simple uh, for you to understand. Uh, mm. Actually. In old Chinese language, uh, one term or one word, you know, Chinese Han Zi Han word, you uh, refers to many different meanings, you know, and the meanings have different layers, you know. Even mm -hmm. those one one word can have different pronunciations, and different pronunciations means different kind of functions and different locations, different people, different social class. You know, they use the different terms. Mm -hmm. So and the this kind of, you know, when you use one term, you can refer to different things. So um, in Chinese language and also ancient Chinese book, they're always use play with these words. And uh, when they play this word, they can create story. They can create the fictional world, you know. Mm. Uh, that's the really interesting point. I'd, and I just find out, I figure out your work and the, the ancient Chinese language, you know, there is something similar and the thing is gonna be the, the layered different I mean the multiple narratives the layered uh, storytelling and mm -hmm. in your works you know mm -hmm. so I don't know what you feel about that but that's mm -hmm. the thing I want to share with you right no, you can hear me right now it's fascinating so it's like yeah yeah is the word written the same way yes or? written exactly the same way Wow, so you could write a whole sentence, just the same word, but it would yes. grow into something. It's just yeah. a, and, and, and it's pronunciation or it's the context or it's which it's next to another word which suddenly takes it somewhere else. Yes, mm -hmm. it's just like you, the writer encodes some meaning. 
but the decoder, I mean, someone who, the reader who decode the meaning will use their own way, you know, and yeah. between the encoding and the decoding, there is a, some, you can say misunderstanding, but there is some beauty in the translation also, you know, just came out, you know, so yeah, yeah, which, which I think is fascinating, right? Yeah. It's like the, the same way when we, maybe the Chinese audience see your work, you know, mm -hmm. even though they misunderstand though, they can still get the love, you know, mm. it's like kind of general reaction. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's, mm. that's, that's fascinating when you start, um, I mean, it's also editing and when you work, you edit a film, yeah. you're sort of, yeah, the image you're going to put after if it's uh, the seaside and then you put a truck just after you're going to mm -hmm. think oh it's a noisy seaside <laughs> or if you put a, a palm tree just after the image of the sea so then, yeah you know it's, it's all about the meaning of one image constantly change uh, mm -hmm. we, and also the sound of bird or the sound of motorway and uh, that piece I did uh, swallow in Italy with this woman uh, bathing in a beautiful waterfall and it's very romantic the idea of the grand tour and uh, and the sense very sensual and feeling being really the body sort of you feel the water on people's legs and you feel the your your the the, 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 the actual reality was like there was a motorway just next door to it and you know like kind of <laughs> and that's you know that's when do these meanings of um uh connection and the words and the image and that are constantly very malleable and change and are subtly evolving through situation and same with the work um and stephanie you again <laughs> you you posed but you, you <laughs> no. uh, but there, there is um, this kind of i i think what's what's fascinating is how how the work constantly change. I think that's I, it's the same when she says the words meaning change, but also the an artist practice. I look, I'm holding something white there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the ball, the magic ball, um, and then uh, the uh, the meaning of um, the work evolves constantly. It's shown in China, of course. It's perceived differently than if it's shown in in England, where the humor we have. I grew that my practice grew in London and grew in England, you know, and it's got this sort of um, humor that's very, for me, connected to, to Britain and, and, but at the same time, Flemish as well, the Northern, I really feel this too. But and then if I showed it, uh, show my work sometime in country like, I mean, in France, there's a, it's less lofter sometimes because they don't, the humor is not the same or, you know, and but then it's, they take, they take, something else from the image and I think that's the, that's wonderful that's when I was uh, always for the I love how I'm not holding on the work you know I'm not it doesn't belong to me I create something but then it belongs to uh, who uh, might hold on and it belongs to this misunderstanding of this other translation that happens when someone look at it it's it, the, the evolution yeah. is the point isn't it it's uh, I, I wrote to you back in the autumn and used this uh, phrase that I've been reading about of ontological term mm. kind of, yeah 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 in philosophy and in anthropology and I think it's this idea that we don't just observe different representations of a reality mm -hmm. but we live in parallel ways of being and Stephanie made that very clear in terms of <clears throat> within Chinese language <clears throat> excuse me in culture and between different countries different um, cultures of course beyond that between different people between different individuals there are and between different species between humans between animals which is an important part of you there we have parallel ways of being and none is right and neither are they separate but they um, we shift between them and yeah. by being aware of other states of reality we heighten our understanding of our own and, and mm. that's what it seems that your work is doing it's not you know it's mm -hmm. not representing something fixed to contemplate but something malleable to live in in some way mm. yeah it's totally and i think that's um that's uh that's yeah it's it's a, a waking up consciousness too as you said it's about us awakening to not just one system <laughs> One and and because there's this desire naturally to hold on what we know and you know being like 
uh, this I can work with <laughs> and kind of being nervous of the unknown, of course, or, or like, uh, because um, maybe we can't talk about it, we don't have the right word, we also can't. We can't really be an octopus. I mean, I cannot be an octopus. I can. Uh, you, can try. <laughs> you can try. Yeah, I can try. You can and you can, try, you can try to um, to imagine putting yourself in another being. Just and it's it's, it's about also empathy, general empathy of uh, each other and. Um, empathy first with a waiter serving you but the empathy with the table you're sitting on and like who made it how it was made uh, uh the empathy for the wood grow or you know and then everything has that kind of um much more uh yeah we can sort of um yeah as you said it gives us more pleasure as well of living because we aware and um we haven't uh, spoken about the tapestry that's a central piece uh in the show yeah, uh, yeah. And mm. maybe worth touching on because that relates to the idea of a of the, the framework it is a framework it's a passageway yeah. it's a framework it's a uh it's an entrance it's, it's a memorial and you know you take this idea uh, of a memorial, mm -hmm. which probably culturally we see as being commemorative and, you know, it's become a very contested area globally in terms of people, I don't know, kind of uh, compromised histories um, being questioned. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't necessarily deal with that, but you, you inhabit the memorial and you turn it into something that maybe it's a memorial to your grandfather, but it's really about your grandmother, yeah. about... Um, something informal, something fluid, something soft. Um, so uh, it'd be interesting maybe to talk a bit about that. Mm. Yeah, I guess uh, the, this tapestry um, um, is um, kind of the lobby of memory of, as you say, memo yeah, memorizing a, a, a place but also what happened or mom so it's kind of a gathering of a lot of narrative around my my grandparents and as you say my granddad was the is the first the, the protagonist that sort of came in very early in the work but as you go deeper into you start to realize the grandma is she's the the, she's holding it all you know and she and she had i mean it's also about of course history and um position of women uh in uh, especially i mean all over in all different situations but in the arts was clearly she 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 um she was in the background and uh so she uh uh which she didn't mind you know a lot of i mean it's also interesting it's like mm -hmm. We can't imagine that we wouldn't mind now, <laughs> but it was sort of she, she, um, she uh, played with it. In, in in some way, to not be in the foreground gives you a lot of freedom as well to just play and com constantly uh, be creative. So she was doing a lot of pottery, like tapestries, and uh, I I I tried to um, to to talk about these different uh, narratives. So the tapestry uh, there, you'll see uh, portraits of both of them, but then, then if you, then those two doors, it was really this idea of playing with, um, uh, you're, you're entering their life or their subconscious, you're mm. taking in us. Um, you, you're again, uh, you're gonna empathy with, with these, fictional or real characters but you, you're going to be in in it because you're physically uh, going to the work fascinating and it's the it's the way into the show this picture by the way is uh, from my grandmother so a little oh really great i mean oh. she made it exactly appear very strong <laughs> and and yeah it's the the, the and also, I think with the idea of narrative around the family, I think it's a lot, mm. 
um, the grandparents, uh, the uh, yeah, there's the uncle, then uh, deeper travel agency. You know, they all come connected. It's just, I think I I, I started working uh, with that with them because we all have grandparents alive or not. You know, and then you all. Uh, can empathy uh, again with that uh, with a certain narrative like well, yeah my grandma made the artwork and maybe at the time uh, not many people saw what she's doing but we are reassessing history we are relooking at history we are recreating um and we and that lobby is kind of a a way to to choose different routes <laughs> of accessing uh, memory as you, you 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 put it and I think um, uh, that's uh, yeah and that, so my grandma helped me made that tapestry so we were two, both of us working for years on it and we uh, so we're so glad it made it all the way to China and then yeah <laughs> La and Greg, I think this work is uh, fascinating, just mm -hmm. as you, you both mentioned about, because the work not only connects with your fictional family history, but also your real memory, feelings, and then you transfer all of that into your art, you know. Mm -hmm. But then it comes to my question. Does mm -hmm. the tapestry symbolize, you know, a beginning, always a beginning, or maybe you know, some kind of start for your adventure? That's the first question. And then the second one is, and if you want to dig a um, tunnel in Tang Shanghai, what is the imaginary adventure you are expecting to have? <laughs> um, so first, um, the tap first about the tapestry. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, What's I think also with the, the, the materiality of this tapestry, you feel mm. uh, the weight of making as well, you know, the weight of, of, of skills and, and weaving and, 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 and yes, uh, weaving history, weaving thread, weaving, uh, and also t this idea of the tapestry being, of course, this, uh, kind of classic material that you we've used for centuries and um, that's um, you know the tapestry bayel where you tell the narrative of of someone's conquête or whatever you know and how this uh, I think for using that material for me has a, a very strong uh, connection to the past of course but also the future is this pixels you know it's very pixelated it's not precise it's not it's it's still um it's you have a vision from far when you come close it's completely pixelated or it's like it's a stop on image of course like uh, mm -hmm. like when we are being <laughs> stopped on on zoom and uh, so it's kind of a this uh, uh, this is not it's a very uh, it's a material that i start uh, that i always wanted to use but of course it's a lot of work and, and energy and and it's costly and you know it needs um it needs um care and so once the family start joining me we we all manage to make it sure, so <laughs> but, I mentioned that connection between thank you and digital yeah, right. um, do you know the artist carsten nikolai mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. who showed in shanghai um maybe four oh. years ago alongside uh it was a group exhibition with uh, lu xiaodong uh and mm -hmm. carsten was talking to him at the opening and he makes beautiful digital work kind of like weaving mm -hmm. mm. patterned uh, work and I hadn't realized this but he comes from a small town in Germany that was famous as a as a place of weaving and it was culturally that that's what people did that's what the whole industry was and as that declined it the skills turned into it becoming a place of digital creation mm -hmm. which is yeah mm, cool that it's just a, a deep mindset as well as a set of specific skills that allow that transference. Yeah, that's fascinating. And we don't, um, sometimes you don't realize what you're doing, but it's actually, it came from somewhere. From <laughs> and somewhere. I mean, actually my um, own uh, family history is also from textile. Like there's a lot of textile history. And I guess a lot mm -hmm. of us would have had it. I mean, I'm sure 
we find deep in <laughs> in our pa past generation we were um, had to yeah be on you know, with the earth or or, or weaving um, wool or weaving <laughs> cotton to to dress ourselves so I guess yeah it was definitely it's it must be very deep which yeah uh, um, has uh, now this this um, new meaning because uh, yeah we 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 translated again maybe by subconscious so you know yeah uh, but also with knowledge uh, but it's a, it's a bit of both I think <laughs> yeah uh, that's so true and the interesting mm. point again for deep you know I I got a deep kind of connection or attachment you know when I uh, saw your uh, saw your work. Um, I mean, your exhibition at French um, Pavilion at the Venice Biennale in 2019, the deep sea blue surrounding you, and mm. also compare it with this time, you know, uh, the show in uh, Tang Shanghai. Mm. You know, uh, I want to say, I, uh, I, I found out that the narrative on both sides gave me a relatively, you know, um, I mean, in the, in the Venice Biennale show, gave me a relatively even a spatial feeling, but this time I sh I thank Shanghai. I found out that the two different you know narratives, oh uh, two different passages are quite different. Whether in the visual presentation or the mise en scene, I mean the management of the space you use. So can you speak of it? You know, as the mm -hmm. artist, and also maybe you talk a little bit about how you see the functions of parallel narratives in these two exhibition. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's really two um, situations. I mean, the, the yeah. uh, palette, uh, the, um, uh, no, the, um, when I represented France in, uh, in Venice was a very specific moment in mm -hmm. life, but also a specific situation, uh, this pavilion representing, or do they represent, uh, do they, even try or should they, you know, represent the culture and this is, of course, extreme complex thing that comes with the situation, with pavilion, with hierarchy, with, uh, and so I think the work there was very, um, I, I think it was um, uh, less on, it was more uh, taking you on a journey for one journey, but you still entered through the back uh, of the pavilion. You had to go through the back route. As it, it was very much a bat. Um, for me, it was talking about the idea of uh, who, what do we belong to, nation, also nationality and and situ mm. you know, situation, invitation that I had to 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 represent, you know, and how um, that you don't enter automatically by the front door and quite often not you know you have to go through the back door and find your way and 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 dig a bit and and understand a place a culture a situation and 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 then of course it's sort of layered with many many subjects because we are not i'm i, I was at the end of, uh, ideally we'd be birds uh, we belong to no nations you know and we have that freedom. So it's not so bad. This, uh, but then, so, and we start walking on this resin floor, which the nature we over uh, using or we over, uh, uh, yeah, take for granted. And, and how this you start, you're, you're walking on hard water and, and plastic water. And so, to, and, and, and of course, it's visually stunning, but it's also quite. Uh, um uh yeah so it was very ma many different and there I worked a lot with french and english mostly playing you know mistranslating one uh, language to another and sort of and then you you then again what was interesting in that piece is you still could choose to escape from the left or the right actually and it, mm -hmm. quite a lot of people would have take one um pentacle which was on the right and uh, which was one room but for me, I saw it as this body of the octopus where there's this water where she's landed and and then they, so if you could go left you a lot of people oh was there another room I didn't know and you know so I just got one narrative not the other and mm -hmm. and I think that's that's kind of um, 
that's great. I mean, we don't all have the same narrative and we shouldn't see everything and we can't see everything. And, and if you if you missed one, then you, you have the other, and the other one has the other one, then the other one, your friend might tell you what she saw and then you start to imagine what it was and you, know, you create another vision of the show again. And so I think that's, that's yeah, I didn't think again that there was this two way out where in tank is two way in, you know? And, uh, great point. and, yeah. and then it's um, in tank is two way in and it's also in tank I'm showing a lot of uh, different works, you know, it's a mini we different work that was were creating for different situation. Uh, um, the, if it was my museum, if it was is a, a really a, a video that was made for the house de Kunst in uh, Munich mm. which, when I said we were pulling the floor up, and uh, the other one in tool that is here was made. Um, uh, this is higher, higher, but this one, yeah, in tool that is here. This. It's the image that is melting into the ground and and uh, it's the desire of um, it's for me I started on it with as, as an insect who's been in a cocoon or as my granddad who's been digging uh, deep into his, his uh, subconscious or his desire you know this desire to escape and he's digging that tunnel to Africa from northern England and um, and then he arrives and it's like whew, it's warm and so much um, you, you're fed and it's like a, also the insect that come to life and swallow, 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 swallow is everything, tries to drink as much pollen and tries to take as much and it's also about our life, we take, we try to take as much as we can to understand it and feel so alive and then at the end of the film I've been to all your it's it's uh, you you swallow then you are you you you're melted you 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 used you've consumed everything and you are you belong to the ground again or you know as the insect as all of our, 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 our beings will will be uh, and that's sort of um, so I think they, I think it's hard to really compare the two exhibition because here it was uh, for me it's, it's showing quite a lot of different uh, narrative uh, from the work where um, Venice was very much, I built, I, I grew, that work grew from the day I was invited to the day I was showing it. And it was completely a, a one, one piece that evolved by meeting people, gathering. And, and here we gathered um, creations. <laughs> so pieces that were, but they, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, we both have, uh, yeah, they both, uh, I guess, uh, I guess here at, in Tank, you can uh, enter different, even more different subconscious, different consciousness, different yeah. uh, uh, narratives, yeah. Yeah, good point. Actually, you have already figured out yourself about, you know, the difference between these two exhibitions, I mean, the Venice and the Tank Shanghai, and you point out that uh, it is the difference between two way in and two way out. I really like this point. And, um, and um, uh, the other thing, another thing is we see how language can kick start the other senses. And we just saw the picture that is your work um, into all that is here. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, please. please. <laughs> we found this familiar exactly. layered storytelling, quick editing, montage, and uh, wordplay. So when people mention about you, sometimes they, they will say that this kind of combination um, to your work, uh, and they call it as a trompe, trompe l'oeil, right? Mm -hmm. I think a trompe l'oeil uh, here refers to the visual intensity and a strong impact you give us. But as an artist, how do you view this issue yourself? That's my question, yeah. The issue of trompe l'oeil? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the term. Yeah, no, I, I mean, the strong racial intens intensity and the strong impact, racial impact. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think um, it's an, an interesting word to get uh, used because I, <laughs> I actually use it uh, regularly, I think, because um, I find with, um, mm. with um, art in general, but maybe with moving images even more, you, we are playing emotion we are recreating situation mm. we are translating um, uh, 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 
translating feelings, but it's never the feeling you would feel otherwise. You know, it's it's a translation always. So it's a trompe play mm -hmm. of something. But when you see someone crying on screen, you want to cry as well a bit, you know, and it's the mm -hmm. trompe play of if you see lemon, you swallow sour lemon, you you feel the sourness in your in your mouth or you so and it's also by I mean when I was um Peter Kubelka, a lot of artists I, I love when we talk about food or about uh, everything we see we know the taste so you you look at a chair you've tasted the wood as a child you've licked everything you know and you yeah it's not just the image so it's a trompe l'oeil that sort of brings all these senses uh, and when you say the in intensity of the videos it's through this strong play of senses as well you know like you smell this image you're gonna swallow this image you're gonna eat those flowers you're gonna enter this flower you you tr you're you're trump playing in a, a possibility and a, and and a connection with what you have experienced yourself so you've seen flowers you've smelled them you so it's i mean on their own they wouldn't work they need your experience to be able to to trump play <laughs> to play with you on that sort of um translation so it's uh that's that's um that's something uh very uh interesting and and uh and and it's when yeah it's it's translation and uh, I often actually use this word. I think video, for sure, we trump, uh, we use a lot. This idea, it's a it's a medium that can enhance so many senses: the, the movement, the sound, the the sound. You know, we use a lot of your senses when you watch a video, so we can um, take you as close to a <laughs> real situation. But it's not. You know, it's like you don't, you can't touch it. You can't smell it only only for your brain uh, or and uh yeah so that's um I work uh, law in into all that is here you you certainly use employee but you use um it's a sequence of images and it seems that you use different devices you use fade focus zoom mm -hmm. each of them suggesting a, a burrowing deeper it, mm -hmm. so it's a multiplicity of techniques that mm. um, that you use for that purpose. So it's a sequence of images, mm -hmm. and, but because it's um, treated in this kind of multiple way of shifting the focus all the time or mm. kind of intensifying the zoom, mm. it always has the sense of kind of progression. It's fascinating, it's a virtuoso piece of work really. <laughs> yeah, I'd, uh, yeah it's, uh, it's also when you make a work, you keep, how can I, enhance a feeling you know how can so you keep you you sort of when I'm, I'm i'm the work really happens in the editing or and as i'm so i'm this the video i can't write from a to b this is what it's going to be about i'm i'm editing i'm filming i'm editing i'm filming i'm editing i'm filming and constantly sort of feed this creature <laughs> that's going to become uh, um, alive or has its uh, its life and i think um with that, the, 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 I think mean, it's, it's an immediate uh, response to the, to, to the image before and how can it really pull you down? Okay, I need a siphon that sort of pulls you down and then I need a, a, a rope that pulls, you know, so it's like you, I, I look into um, images that I can just, sometimes it's just uh, something in my hotel room or wherever I am. And, but it's sort of hard to in, um, enhance that that, uh, that that thing. So yeah, in terms of images gathering and also this sometimes overwhelming, uh, there's a moment where the, the flowers are just an explosion in your face, like uh, fireworks of um, of um, of these colors and sort of smell and. And I know that through the quantity, it's it's like a crowd. Suddenly you feel a crowd, you know? If you're on your own, you feel a uh, much more bit quiet in this desert, <laughs> you know? But it's like the crowd of images also feeding one another is, is a way to uh, enhance uh, a situation or, or the loneliness of one flowers and the beauty of it. 
is another situation, of course. And um, yeah, it's definitely. Um, yeah, I like your explanation. That's that was so great because actually the language can also refer to the screen image, the image you made, right? And the movie image you made, and the, both the movie image and the language you use. Just as a Greg mentioned, the book uh, lexicon, right, and can kickstart the other senses, which is really important. Indeed, the way how you shift between the two languages, French, French and the English every day. It, and also you shift from the moving image and the found, uh, I mean, the real objects. Uh, it reminds us about, we are just floating on the language, whatever mm -hmm. the language is, English, mm -hmm. French or Chinese, and mm -hmm. even Shanghainese, right? <laughs> and the way of floating itself gives us a sense of freedom. That, I think that's really a great point, right? Yeah, you're, yeah. you're right, Stephanie. I mean, that's a, I mean, it's a fascinating place we're in in the world now as well in terms of this global exchange and and, uh, yeah. and being able to to speak today together and exchange um, um, ideas and sensation and, and and ways of working, but also. Um, being for me, what I also the way I used English or language was mm. a foreigner. I'm an immigrant driven language, and I'm 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 holding it as I can, but I can also create, invent thing or look at it with a distance. Which when you're native, you might have it less because it's really embodied in you. Or, and I think that's fascinating with different cultures uh, holding a language that we're not, it's not primary language and it's it's got its beauty and its complexity mm -hmm. and we bring on um, on language, uh, on culture comes in, of course, and and um, then misunderstanding. And as you say, it's, of, um, it's like being a foreigner, often you feel a kind of freedom, don't you? You're sort of like, ah, yeah. well, I'm free from uh, from all my duties almost or what I, <laughs> I uh, I'm or what I'm supposed to do. And that's something um, for me being in London which gave me a lot of um, freedom uh, in terms of being able to uh, mm. create and uh, play and, and language. And I, I guess um, for you, Stephanie, it's also this language yeah. where we can never completely be <laughs> uh, perfect, but also completely uh, handle it, right? Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's also yeah, it's great. I mean, it's 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 a, a new future yeah. as well. A new um, it's a sense also that incomprehension. I'm sorry about the noise. I might have to mute, but um, no, that's fine. We, it's, incomprehension is something to get used to, really, and not to fear or fight, but you know, to respect mm. and mm. negotiate however you can. You know. Um, mm. Yeah. Your, your phrase of how we're floating on language is, is very beautiful. I can't get that out of my mind. It's such a nice idea that the language exists and we're floating on it. Usually we think of language as being kind of a product of us, but uh, yeah, very powerful phrase. <laughs> right, great. And just like Greg mentioned about maybe it's, we can call it, you know, the different use of language as Greg said. Um, that is the parallel of being, right? Mm. <laughs> the parallel narrative of being, right? Mm. Yeah. And the, I think maybe turn to the, you know, the last question and also the quick one. So uh, for Law is, what are you doing recently? And what is your upcoming art project? Can you tell us a little bit about that? No, retired. Do, you um, meet, do I need to mute? Background <laughs> noise. <laughs> I mean, in the desert. <laughs> uh, so the desert of uh, virtual. Um, uh, but yeah, there's a virtual, there's a, a, a large scale sculpture being, um, uh, who sort of find its way, move its way all the way to uh, this museum called Louisiana in Denmark, in, in Copenhagen, which we are uh, installing right now. She's a bit tricky. She doesn't want to move exactly in the way sometimes. <laughs> she, she needs a lot of care and she's very, uh, she's, uh, she's ready to breastfeed the world. <laughs> she has a lot of, uh, uh, she's very feminine. It's for a show called Mother. And she's, uh, she's, uh, she's slowly taking shape. And that's, uh, I'm, I'm in Copenhagen actually at the moment. Um, 
uh, for um, for this to to take care of her and to uh, to uh, to um, to 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 make her as alive as possible. <laughs> So yeah, so she's uh, she's on the way, and then there's a, will be a show in um, in Schatzenberg as well in uh, in uh, in also in Copenhagen. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different projects. Uh, just there's a show at the moment at the Van Abbe as well, which is this um, uh, continuity of the show we had at Listen Gallery, uh, so Chapter Two. Um, yeah, so there's a uh, quite a few um, things to yeah <laughs> to keep uh, to keep uh, mo moving around and and um, and uh, yeah playing with uh, so yeah this is uh, I think that's uh, we lost Stephanie again I think at, right at the end no um, yes. and so. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of work uh, shows I'm working on. I'm just, uh, um, I think I'm, I'm in a bit of a desert. Of <laughs> um, it's Stephanie there? No, it's still frozen. Um, mm. I might just comment on, as a gallery, you know, working with you and wanting to promote your work and, you know, give platforms and opportunities. This time is obviously really um, challenging, but I think it it makes for creativity. You know, it means um, you were able to do the show with us in September, mm. even though it seemed impossible and was certainly mm. frustrating, but it happened and many people saw it and it was well received. Mm. This balance between the digital and the real, mm. I think is is going to be a continual balance. And, it, and again, I think we treat it creatively and positively that mm. the digital actually allows some of the kind of delightful um, glitches that uh, we're seeing in your uh, uh, chosen background, mm -hmm. but also it allows an intimacy often that one has assumed it doesn't allow. You know, one always thinks that the digital is usually about that it's a secondhand experience and that it's a mm -hmm. compromised experience, and it is, of course, and there's nothing to replace uh, mm -hmm. human connection. But but it's also it's interesting. I mean, it's it becomes an art piece. You know, how do you, you use it well? That's how do you use it well is the question. It's not do you use it or do you not use it, but how do you use it well? Yeah. yeah so it's really uh, it becomes um, a deeper, stronger question. I mean, it's it's a creation. I mean, it, should it be an artwork? It's a representation. So again, so it's like yeah. uh, as long as it's deeper and stronger, then it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 but yeah <laughs> um yeah so stephanie we lost you again and um I yeah just the show in new zealand <laughs> in schatzenberg uh there's also at the jewish museum in uh, manchester great um and uh yeah quite a lot of new 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 production uh which is uh which is great i mean i've got a lot of people ready to help me here as you can see. <laughs> Great. We're looking forward to seeing it. Great. <laughs> you know, the interesting point for, for me, you know, because I, I got lost, you lost me many times during this talk. It seems like I was digging a tunnel to find you, you know, <laughs> to your day. <laughs> yes, oh, I'm coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, for Greg, you know, I want to ask you, what do you think the next step made by a law and anything unpredictable you can tell at this stage? <laughs> it might be a tricky question. Yeah, correct? <laughs> that is a tricky And to see with the future. <laughs> um, I think we, you, you were uh, lost or digging or whatever when uh, I was speaking with Laura about um, as a gallery working with an artist wanting to you know, provide opportunities. And at this time, a lot of it is about uh, balancing the real world and the digital. Also for yeah. us working, and it's really fascinating how uh, working from uh, New York to London, to mm -hmm. Shanghai, um, where we have, you know, three spaces, um, spaces mm -hmm. in each city. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the, 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 the connectedness and the continuity, even at this time when you can't travel, um, that there's, 
you know, the conversations remain dynamic. Uh, the opportunities are what they are. You know, they they come and go depending on the medical situation, and we can't. That's that's both predictable and unpredictable. We thought that we predicted it, but actually, you know, we're we're at the mercy of um, this virus in some ways and how we choose to handle it. Mm. Um, but nevertheless, there are ways that we can keep talking and keep presenting and keep creating. And mm -hmm. as long as it's deeper and stronger, we're onto a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, that, Stephanie, again, digging her way <laughs> to us, I think. Uh, but she's, I do, I might uh, make a last comment that the, the Tank Shanghai is an extraordinary, um, enterprise, an extraordinary venue, the nature of the uh, spaces is, you know, monumental and, and strange. And I think uh, the strangeness, you know, like the way that you engaged with the uh, history of the Haus der Kunst and mm -hmm. took it on and took on this uh, kind of challenge, these, mm -hmm. these tank spaces are in some ways overwhelming. Uh, but what I think Tang Shanghai has done is to turn it into a <clears throat> a good challenge, you know, and been very supportive in the way that they've um, really helped artists achieve their vision. Um, what's also great is that it's, there's a tendency for um, maybe kind of coherence within exhibition making, and that that's a good thing. One looks for sense, but I like the way that um, Tang Shanghai has entirely different visions. You walk into one of the spaces and you're immersed in this particular artist's vision. Mm. another mm. space and you're immersed in another vision and mm. you know this uh, rather than a kind of uniformity or um, kind of artificial connectedness I think that that's uh, a really interesting model and it's been interesting to see how it develops and mm. also I just want to pay tribute to this uh, iterative and extended exhibition model more 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 uh, done in three phases so that it's it's a it's a conversation. It's not just here it is, take it or leave it, but it's more about a you know engagement with different artists and different ways of thinking that that changes, that evolves. And so it's yeah. a, a creative process, which uh, I find fascinating. I wish I could see it in person. Yeah, and you feel it's actually something that's um, that's needed now, and that's mm -hmm. going to be. I think the the pandemic's been really hard, but it's also been re uh, focusing us or re assessing the way we were doing things and the speed of things maybe and the, uh, and this longevity of this dialogue with an artist that could be longer term or this uh, dialogue with um, um, and not this I remember like I think a few years ago it was always like who is this next new young artist so, you know there was a lot of that um, dynamic around which is um, which suddenly, I mean, also a few years we start looking at artists from of an older generation, which have been completely forgotten or not taken properly into uh, uh, account. And I think that's that's a that's a, a moment where we can reassess and re, re rethink long terms and have this conversation as we have now, which. Uh, the same. I'm working uh, for with uh, Schaisenberg and Aka in, in Melbourne, and this how to keep the dialogue, the connection, and we want to speak to each other, we want to have this mm -hmm. exchange and not yeah. uh, turn local only, you know, because of course, I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah. but it has a bit of both, a moment where you can actually connect with what's here and also keep the conversation, and uh, that's, 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 I think that's something that we will have uh, time to, <laughs> to take in and assess for, for future. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, uh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. In in terms of the time taking, it seems like our Zoom talk just like um, deep travel, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> online, even uh, online. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Law, and thanks a thanks a lot, Greg.